So good morning and welcome to the Idaho Falls Police Department anti-dodge um, investigation press conference this morning where we will be revealing uh, the DNA phenotype uh, snapshot. Before we get started, I just want to introduce um, who we have up here. We have Dr. Sorry, I almost called you Dr. Um, Detective Pat McKenna, who is the lead investigator on the Angie Dodge case, and then Idaho Falls Chief uh, Mark McBride. Um, also, we will have Skyped in today Dr. Ellen Graytalk from Pheno Labs, or I'm sorry, from Parabon Pheno or Nano Labs. Um, Dr. Graytalk is the director of bioinformics, and she's an expert. Let me just read this really quick. An expert in using comparative genetic or genomics to study complex traits and the lead scientist for the snapshot phenotyping technology. So she'll be here to answer some questions uh, via Skype. So we'll go ahead and turn the time over to uh, Chief McBride. Thank you, Joanne. And thank you everybody for being here today. Uh, for your tenants. I'd like to first off recognize uh, members here from the criminal justice system, law enforcement, the Dodge family, public officials, and community partners. Appreciate you being here today. Members of the media, um, you'll be given a press packet. I don't know if you've got that yet or you'll get that afterwards. It'll be a digital copy of an official statement from the police department. It'll include the uh, phenotypes um, and some information on our most recent partners, uh, Nano Labs. Fairbond Nano Labs and Channel Blend. So you'll have that in a press packet, so you have that information available to you. So I want to start out with, in June 1996, the Dodge family in the city of Otto Falls experienced the death of a young girl named Angie Dodge. Since that day, the Otto Falls Police Department has dedicated thousands of hours each year towards this investigation. <clears throat> Officers have tracked down tips and leads, collected evidence, done thousands of hours of research and collaboration with other agencies, consultants, and companies in effort to identify those responsible for the murder of Angie Dodge. The Idaho Falls Police Department has spent more time and money investigating this case than any other case in the history of this department. This investigation has gone through three administrations, and continues to receive the same level of importance as the initial investigation. The evidence left at the crime scene, including the collection and extraction of one major and two minor DNA profiles, indicates that there is more than one individual involved in the death of Angie Dodge. With current technologies, major profile collected is the only viable DNA sample that can be used to make an identification. But unfortunately, the major DNA profile for whom we believe to be the primary offender has remained unknown. This despite efforts by investigators, utilization of technologies, databases such as Combined DNA Index System, known as CODIS, the FBI's Violent Criminal Apprehension Program, known as VICAP, all designed to make an identification. In the last four years, We've invested more than $43,000 in evidence extraction analysis, DNA profiling, and travel to follow up on leads. This does not include our staff time. Many of the officers assigned to this case have dedicated days off, weekends, holidays, vacation time included, to follow up on leads, make contacts, do research into new investigative tools and techniques and technology. Throughout the investigation, we've created several partnerships whom I want to mention today. We've collaborated with such as Bonneville County Sheriff's Office, Idaho State Police, West Jordan, Utah Police Department, crime labs such as Idaho, Idaho State Police, Bodie and Sorensen, Forensic Genealogist, Innocence Project, Ancestry Public Database, Idaho Cold Case, Idaho Attorney General Office, FBI, Bonneville County Prosecutor's Office, the Dodge family, the Usry family, Channel Blend Communications, and Parabon Nano Labs. So I want to refer to you this first chart here that indicates much of what we do and emphasizes 
the things we've done the last four years especially, but also the basic timeline of the investigation, just kind of an outline of what we've been involved in, what we've been doing, how important this has been to us in this community. I want to say this, that we're very empathetic to the Dodge family, especially Carol. For the loss of her daughter, we continue to look for new ways to identify Angie's killer. So today we're here to introduce and to distribute a picture referred to as a DNA phenotype that has been produced and age enhanced in hopes of providing the department with new leads that we can follow up on. DNA left at the original crime scene has been submitted to Parabon Nano Labs and have been produced they produced a snapshot, what's called a snapshot DNA phenotype. And as Jolyn said, Dr. Ellen Graytack, Director of Bioinformatics from Parabon Nano Labs, is on Skype to answer questions as soon as we introduce this picture. But before we release this, I want to recognize some of our partners that we recently partnered with. Jeff Nyswander, President and CEO of Channel Blend, and Derek Christensen. Project Manager, Channel Blend. Thank you for your service for being here. In partnership with Channel Blend, they have provided a tip line available 24 hours a day that we can receive tips and, and make sure that we capture all those tips from the community. The phenotype will also have this number on there available for the public. But the number is 1-800-927-1239. Callers can leave their name and a number for a callback from investigators, or they can leave an anonymous tip on the recording. We will receive all of that information each and every day from Channel Blend. And I thank them for their service to this community and to the efforts in this uh, investigation. We are in hopes that these tips will lead us further down the trail to closer to capturing the killer of Angie Dodge. So I'm asking each of you, the, the media especially, to help us disseminate this uh, phenotype to the public so the community can be a resource for us to gather information, to continue in our investigation in this, and thank them for their cooperation, and thank the public for their cooperation. So with that, I'd like to just have uh, Detective McKenna, would you go ahead and uncover those uh, sure. phenotypes? Now, Dr. Greytax is going to be the expert on, on answering any questions on these, but uh, We've got two phenotypes. One was, uh, I think the approximate age was early 20s, and then it was age enhanced to in, in the 40s, being about 20 years later. Um, this DNA phenotype gives uh, a profile of what the suspect, the DNA donor, could look like. Um, obviously, there's some knowns from the DNA, and then there's unknowns that are just from their experience. And so I don't have any expertise in this. I know we did research into this before we even went down this road to make sure uh, it was something we wanted to do. And so maybe we ought to introduce Dr. Gray Tack at this time, if there's any questions from the media. D Dr. Gray Tack, hi. Thank you for coming. I'm Chief McBride. Appreciate you being here. And, and if there's any questions on, on these phenotypes, um, the media, do you have any questions you'd like to ask her? Or we all? Um, uh, doctor, can, can you explain a little bit about how the, the um, how you can come up with uh, an idea of what somebody looks like from DNA? Can, can you hear that? Uh, yeah, so what we do is we basically built a big database where we have lots of subjects, thousands of people where we have their DNA and also their physical appearance. So these are just volunteers that we have. So we basically can find the parts of the DNA that correlate with the differences in, let's say, eye color or face change or ancestry, all of that. Um, we, so we find out the parts of the DNA that correlate with each of those traits. And then from that, we can make a prediction on a new subject when we see, oh, that piece of DNA that we always saw in blue-eyed people, we see in this new DNA, for example. Therefore, they might be much more likely to have blue eyes. Um, can, can, can you, uh, has, has there been any um, study done about uh, how, how close the match winds up being once it's produced? Yeah, so we've done a number of 
blind evaluations where agencies or media will send us DNA samples from people that they know and will produce the predictions and they compare them after the fact. They'll send us photographs. And um, those have all been extremely close. We're, we're writing up a paper right now that'll be in an actual academic journal. Um, so I have lots of examples on our website, but nothing with you know, here that I can show you. But uh, we've done lots and lots of testing to show that the predictions um, do resemble the people that the DNA came from. Um, has, has there been any effort to, to see um, not just whether it resembles somebody, but, but whether it resembles a particular person sufficiently that, that you can pick them out um, from other people who sort of look at similar broad features? Right, so the, the goal of this is not identification. There's not going to be only one person in the world that matches those phenotype predictions. The goal is really exclusion uh, you're looking to exclude people in a suspect list who really do not match these characteristics. So you can see that the predictions uh, all come with a range. You know, it might say blue two green eyes or hazel to two brown. Um, you know, we're pr not predicting the exact iris of that person, but the, the point is that there may be traits that are extremely unlikely. And so you can exclude people based on that and focus the investigation to those people who are more likely to match um, and then also have, you know, um, other other reasons to investigate them. Any more questions from the media for um, Dr. Katek? I, I have one more. Still have one? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm not sure if you answered this, but um, in your experience, can you tell us how successful has it been with developing these phenotype snapshots in the past? Uh, well, in terms of accuracy, it's been really excellent. I mean, all of the blind evaluations we've done have gone over very well. Um, from a casework perspective, at this point, we've done uh, just over 100 cases around the country and around the world. And of those, um, we know of at least 11 that have been solved. Um, we, we don't always hear back from the, the, the police departments on how they use the information. Um, but a lot of these cases we work on are, are really old cold cases. And, and there's already not a lot of hope, but at least we're giving some chance to, to start this investigation again and, and get some leads on this person. Brian, anybody else? Is this only for media, or how about the public? Do you have questions from the time? Mm -hmm. you, you can ask the doctor a question. Hi, doctor. I have a question about the time. From the time you get DNA until you can come up with a snapshot. Um, so we are only the computation side, we do not do the lab work. Um, the laboratory assay takes about three days to run. Um, then the data is securely transferred to us and it takes us, um, it's about a day's worth of computation on a pretty intense server. And then uh, we have to write the report on that and that can take a few days. Um, our typical turnaround time is five days, but we usually get the results back faster than that. Did you say five days? 45. 45 days. And what is the cost, just roughly, the cost? Uh, it's $3,600 for each sample. And do you have any competitors that are doing what you're doing? Uh, nobody's <laughs> doing faces or anything to this extent. Um, I know one company that does sort of light versus dark eyes. Um, that, that's about it. So I would assume that what you have is patented so that it's your, your property. Um, it's not patented. We didn't come up with the concept of DNA phenotyping, um, but we, we keep our specific algorithm as, as trade secrets. And the last question would be, how much money would it take if money to do it? And you didn't tell me or somebody how much you would need to be able to speed this up, to make it two hours or two days instead <laughs> of 45? Uh, that would be wonderful. The um, the fastest turnaround time we do right now is, you know, 10 days, and then part of that, of course, is it takes three days to, to do the genotyping assay, and that part is, that's a machine that's manufactured by a company, so we don't really have control over that part of it. Uh, the computation, you know, I can stay up on it to write the report, but, um, so we can sort of do our part within a couple days, but um, getting it down to a few hours, that's gonna be really difficult. 
um, from an engineering perspective. Uh, but uh, if you know of anybody looking to fund a project, we would be happy to work on it. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Carol, you had a question. Uh, yeah, could you tell me, um, I understand that when you do uh, this prototyping or prototyping that um, you do it not by YSDR or SDR. What are the markers and how do you define the markers? So we do this um, basically the rest of the genome, so not the Y chromosome, not the mitochondrial DNA, but the other 22 pairs of chromosomes, which are called the autosome. And uh, that's where most of the human DNA is. And so we use what are called SNPs, or single nucleotide polymorphisms. So whereas STRs are differences in the length of a particular region of DNA, SNPs are actual changes in the DNA sequence. So I might have an A, and you might have a G, and that might be why I have blue eyes and you have brown eyes, for example. What, how big of a sample do they need in order to uh, guess? We work down to one nanogram of DNA. Uh, we've actually gone a little lower than that as well. Um, the lower you, the input, the tougher it is, but one nanogram of DNA is a very small amount. You know, you can get that from a minuscule drop of blood or you know, any, most prime DNA samples are gonna have that quantity. Thanks. All right, I would like to know the That's a real challenge because the DNA, uh, the DNA sequence doesn't change with age, so we can't tell the age of the person from that DNA sample. So our our composites always come out at an age of 25 and a normal body weight. Um, but if the crime happened 20 years ago, that person is not 25 anymore. Or um, I mean, they may not have been 25 at the time. We just we don't know. But we can do age progression. Um, so we basically start from a young adult, and then we can age progress. Uh, we have a forensic artist who's trained to do that. So if the person were 45 at the time, it would look more like this, perhaps. If, yes. If, if, if instead of being a 20-year-old, they were 18, and they were 45, just hypothetically. So we would start here, in our mind, if that's what you know someone might have seen. Right. So. Yeah, then we would need another sort of 20 years okay. of age right. progression to get to now. Okay, well, um, I have a question more for the department. So with the sketch now out or the genotype snapshot, what's the next step for the department? Um, do you possibly have someone on the suspect list? And what are you able to tell us as far as what you all are going through? No, what, what this is designed to do is to, to get tips into the department. We're expecting from, we know from experience in other agencies that when they put these out that they get a lot of phone tips to follow up on. So we're, we're prepared, that's why we uh, partner with Channel Blend to be able to receive these tips so we can follow up on them. So that's the next step that we have, working on that. But we, we need to focus on uh, the doctor so she can uh, she can get about her business. If you got any more questions for her, if not, we, we thank you, doctor, for helping us with this, and we'll probably be in continued conversation with you and your company. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Is there a phone number a person can call in with a tip? Okay. It's the tip. The numbers on the on the phenotypes that we're giving out. So thank you, everybody, for your attendance today and your cooperation with this. And please get this out to the public so that we can receive those tips. Our investigators are ready and willing to continue the hard work that they do in this case and hopefully get some resolution for the uh, Dodge family in this community. Thank you very much.